So having seen uh, the basics of uh, wave mechanics we will now try to understand this subject with the, the help of a few worked out examples. As I said earlier the problem problems related to the determination of or the behavior of structures or the determination of forces on structures etc or even to understand the physics of the behavior of ocean waves itself we have laboratory test facilities which is referred to as wave flume. So before commencing any type of uh, testing of uh, structures we need to know about the characteristics of the waves that can be simulated in the wave flume. So I start the lecture from that with the example given here. So a wave flume here is uh, filled with uh, fresh water to a depth of about 2 meters and assume that a wave of height. 0.3 meters and a period of 2.2 seconds is generated. We are required to calculate the wave celerity, group celerity, energy and power for all of which we have already seen the formulas. So it is just substitution of formulas and also it gives you a feeling for the variables so later we will be dealing with the, the characters wave characteristics in the open ocean. So this is to start with only with a, a wave flume. So the first step would be to determine the wavelength. So we have already seen this relationship that is d by L naught and d by L which is going to be a an implicit equation so we need to solve that. So the first step would be determine L0 which we know is 1.56 into T square so doing that we will get 7.55 meters as the deep water length. Then we calculate D by L0 so for the present problem it comes to 0.26. We have already seen the wave tables wherein we had the different columns one column giving you the d by L naught then d by L then KD 2 KD then tan H KD 2 H uh, sin H KD uh, cos H KD etc. So that table permits us to get the value of d by L corresponding to this value of d by not. I suggest you also refer to this tables and which is available in many of the standard books which have been given under the list of references. So the corresponding d by L is 0.281 and hence with this you can because the water depth is known to you as a 2 meters you can easily calculate your wavelength which is going to be 7.1 meters. So this we have already done in one of our earlier explanation concerning the wavelength and the deep water wavelength. Now we will proceed again with the same problem so the next step is to calculate the celerity which is given as L by T L is known to you and T is also known to you. So you can calculate your celerity as 3.23 meters. Now group celerity the formula is as given here. So this can also be easily calculated wherein this KD is nothing but 2 pi D by L. So for a the uh, uh, d by L naught for which uh, uh, you have the value you can get all these uh, 
variables the value of all these uh, variables from the wave tables itself corresponding to that d by L naught. So herein for this it is KD is uh, 1.76 and uh, uh, sin h k 2 KD is uh, put here and then you can calculate your uh, group solidity as 1.95 meters per second. Then energy is gamma h square by 8. So gamma is uh, given here in terms of Newton and wave height is uh, 0.3 meters. So you can get the energy per unit crest width that is what we calculate that is the definition of energy. And similarly power is energy into the group solidity, group solidity is already calculated so the product will be your power. So it is quite straightforward in dealing with uh, some of these uh, variables which you need to ca uh, calculate for solving some of the problems related to maritime structures. So we will go into the second problem, second problem says oscillatory surface waves were observed in deep water and the wave period was found to be 8 seconds. The question is at what water depth would the phase velocity begin to change with the decreasing depth. What does that mean? We have already seen that when the waves propagate from deep to shallow water. So when d by L equal to 0.5 this is the area. So beyond this you know that C0 is going to be a function of only wave period okay. So when only when this condition reaches your water depth I mean the waves will start filling the seabed and that is a point at which your celerity or the speed with of the wave will start changing that is what is being asked. So that particular point is nothing but L0 by 2 which we will see later. What is the phase velocity? The next question is what is the phase velocity at a bottom depth of 16 meters and 4 meters. So you are given two water depths for which you need to calculate the celerity and probably make a comparison with the deep water celerity. Solution as usual you start off with your L0 and then calculate here. Now in this problem you are supposed to calculate this L0 by 2. What is this L0 by 2? That is what I had just now explained. So that gives the water depth at which the speed of the wave is supposed to get changed and what is that water depth that is going to be around 50 close to 50 meters. So water depth less than 50 meters the wavelength will keep on changing as the depth decreases. So let us start with the, the other problem the next subdivision is at water depth of 16 meters I calculate my d by L0 and from the tables I calculate my d by L, calculate my wavelength and then your celerity is calculated as 10.4 meters per second. So you repeat the same calculations for water depth equal to 4 meters then you see that the celerity decreases. The speed of the wave decreases as your wave, wave as the water depth decreases that is what it implies. Now you look at the variation now. So here it is 10 meters per second and which is reduced to 6 meters per second in uh, uh, 4 meters water depth. So the deep water celerity as we have calculated earlier is 1.56 into T so which will be around 13 meters per second. So when you try to work out the ratio this gives around a 0.83 is the variation 
whereas as you go shallower you see that uh, the order of difference would be almost uh, 50 percent. So you need to be very careful in uh, calculating the wavelength for the corresponding uh, water depth for which you are interested in designing the structure. So that is uh, those are those were the two basic uh, uh, examples for calculating uh, the most fundamental parameters which you will be dealing with wave mechanics. So we move on to the third problem is there any doubts I think it is all quite uh, straightforward okay. So consider a particle I am talking about a, a fluid particle initially at 8 meters below the still water line. So, this is the still water line and this distance is 8 meters and 20 meters this is not to the scale anyway and 20 meters above the seabed. So, this is the elevation within the fluid medium where you are required to find out some information. So, what are those information? you are supposed to find out the size and character of the orbit of the particle. Once you calculate your d by l you will know what, what would be the character of the particle whether it will be a circular or an elliptical. So, let us uh, and uh, what, uh, what are the parameters given to you? The parameters given to you are the wave period and the deep water wave height. Remember you are given the deep water wave height. So, from this uh, you get the water depth as 28 meters, the d by L naught has calculated as uh, is calculated as shown here and uh, from the wave table you also have a column that directly gives you h by h naught on the assumption that the seabed is seabed contours are parallel based on that assumption you can use this. So, for this uh, d by L you also now get your h by h naught and so once you have calculated this you can calculate your uh, uh, wavelength and also the wave height. So, you see the difference the, the common mistakes uh, students usually normally make is try to use the they use the deep water wave height for a water depth maybe 10 meters or 5 meters or maybe the deep water wavelength for 5 meters or 10 meters this is a common mistake people make. So, that is the reason why I am showing all the differences with the help of worked out examples. So, you now you can appreciate the difference so you have to be very careful. And all these things can also be either calculated or you can also try to get from the wave tables. Okay. So, let us take the 8 meters at z equal to 8 meters, z equal to minus 8 meters, this is minus. So, this is your still water line, minus 8 meters is at this location. recollect the formulas which we have seen the expressions which we have seen for calculating the particle displacements. See the, the particle displacements are provided here the formula for particle displacements are provided here. This is the horizontal displacement whereas this is the vertical displacement and this is nothing but the semi major axis and the semi minor axis which we have seen. So, substituting uh, be sure that z equal to minus 8 is substituted here water depth is already known to you that is nothing but 28 meters then you calculate your d and that d only. So, 2 times the d is this, this is the mean axis. So, uh, this is the 
semi major axis and this is going to be the semi minor uh, semi major axis. So, the whole thing will be 2.3 something okay. and the value of B which is the semi minor axis is uh, something like 0.86. So, the whole thing will be around 1.79. So, before that itself you know that because the d by l value is the d by l value is 0.2 you know that it is going to be elliptical orbit. So, next at the surface repeat the same calculations you will see that the value is 1.58 and 1.37. And B becomes a 0 at the seabed because of the formula. So, what I'm, and we also know that the vertical displacement will be almost negligible in intermediate water depth near the seabed or it will be very negligible. Okay. So, now you see how your elliptical orbit, how the waves, I mean a, a fluid particle will be undergoing the motion. So, it will be an elliptical orbit. So, if the direction of wave propagation is the, like this, so the, orbit, the particle will be moving like this and here its displacement will be as shown here and here it will be like this. Okay. That clearly explains and also gives us a feeling for the magnitude what could be the order of displacement for a given wave height and for, for given uh, environmental conditions. Okay. So, that was a problem on uh, the horizontal water, water particle displacement as well as the vertical displacements. Now, we go in for the next problem which is fourth example this is the fourth example. Now, we have a wave height of 1.5 meters and 6 meters uh, 6.5 seconds is the period. We are required to plot the variation of orbital velocity and acceleration both in the vertical and the horizontal directions and the particle position is also given which is 2.8 meters below the SWL, I mean the still water level, and 12 meters above the seabed. You are now required to estimate the maximum velocities at these positions, some of the positions that is at this position means at that particular elevation of z equal to 2.8 minus 2.8 meters at the sea level uh, at the sea, still water level and this at the seabed. Similar to what we have done for uh, uh, the particle displacement in the last problem. So, you repeat the calculations you will uh, you know now I think you, you have enough knowledge in uh, getting all the wavelength and other th the usage of uh, tables etcetera. So, you can also get all this information like uh, your cosh k d etcetera for z equal to minus uh, 2 by 2.8. Once you substitute all these values in these expressions that is u max is given by this expression. So, make sure that minus 2.8 meters is uh, inserted there. Now many of the students forget that forget that sign and they land up with some value which is totally incorrect. So, then also when you are answering to the questions of this nature you have to be very careful with the sign and this is another common mistake the students make. So, u max is going to be positive 
in this case it is around 0 0.6 meters per second whereas W max will be a negative one with 0 0.52 I had already indicated how all these things vary the phase variations etc. I do not want to repeat again and then u dot max what do you mean by u dot max u max etc that is the phase so you are supposed to have u equal to this much into sin theta that sin theta equal to 1 okay so when sin theta equal to 1 you have the maximum value for velocity so similarly u dot max will be as given here and w max is also given here although it looks like it's just a simple substitution of the values for the variables and obtaining the result i see many of the students making a number of mistakes in using this simple formula okay so when you are doing such a, a important works you should also have the basic physics behind the, your mind okay so for example if you are having a, a sine curve and then you are writing u max is equal to a negative sine what does it imply Uh, some uh, guy, uh, some uh, people can may get a uh, answer something they write u u u max equal to 0 so these are all absurd so when you are working on not necessarily this uh, prob, uh, this area any area when you are working with problems you should also have the physics behind your mind when you are trying to solve all these problems now at uh, z equal to 0 that is at still water line so again you substitute all these values get all the values I mean u max so naturally u max is expected to be higher at the still water so and that is what you are getting here and then w max u dot max and etc. you repeat the calculations for z equal to minus 14.8 so now if you plot if you just put all these values here along the y axis uh, along uh, uh, the horizontal axis for example so I we have worked out only for three different elevations you can do it for the entire water depth right and then at each elevation you will have velocity acting and if you join all them all of them the curve is something like this and it is going to be a hyperbolic variation and this is what is was explained earlier the variation of particle displacement etc and now we are trying to understand with an example is that okay so we will go into the next problem so earlier we had looked into the maximum velocity and then maximum accelerations there may be at some point of time there may, there may be uh, uh, an interest of finding out all these uh, the values of these variables for not at the maximum point but at a some other phase so for example here a wave with a height of uh, 4.5 meters and wave length is also given here as 75 meters propagates in a water depth of 20 meters determine the local horizontal and vertical velocities 
in a depth 6 meters below the still water line. What does that mean? That means you are having a wave, the problem says that there is a wave moving, the total wavelength is 75 meters. and it says that it is one sixth ahead of the wave crest that is one sixth is somewhere here. What we are supposed to find out is what are the values of your local horizontal and vertical velocities and accelerations or in this case it is just simply asked for the velocities. At still water level at a position of 1 sixth of the head of the wave crest. So, that means I calculate 1 by 6 that is what is indicated here. So, this will be now 12.5 meters then I can calculate the phase the total wavelength is for 360 degrees. So, for 12.5 I can calculate. So, the angle will be something like 100 and 20 degrees. Is that clear? So, then for this value, this is a phase, and now you use the uh, 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 at different z's, I mean, the at different elevations. So, in this case, it is uh, minus 6 meters. So, use this and then make sure that you are using the appropriate. Uh, sin value I mean uh, uh, the sin or co cosine and then that will result in a value of. So, this will be definitely less than the u max or w max. So, this, uh, this problem may be useful particularly when you are using the satellite imageries etcetera to understand the or to derive the characteristics of waves. The problem states that aerial photographs of a coastline displayed the presence of two wave systems. The exercise is more of getting used to dealing with the different variables associated in this subject that is the purpose of all this examples worked out examples. One of the one two wave system one with the crests apart 100 meters. So, one is I have a, a wavelength of 100 meters. and another has a wave of 20 meters. So, there are two waves which is propagating and at the time of a major breaking when the measurements are take being taken it is observed that the wave period for this wave for the longer wave is 12 seconds. What is required by you is to find out what is the depth at which the waves were observed that is one thing. The next one is what is the period of the smaller uh, the wave with a smaller length. How do we use the same equation to arrive at all these values? So, you see L major is I am calling it longer wave as L major and the smaller one as L minor. So, this is going to be 100 meters and this is 20 meters and the T major is 
12 seconds. So, use your usual expression that is the expression for the wavelength and for this. So, you should not get mixed up now these two is a one pair. So, use that gravitation constant you know. So, I can determine the tan h k d. Once I get the value of tan h k d, then I can just simply get my k d value, okay. Or d by value I can directly get from the wave tables. Once that is obtained, since the wavelength is 100 meters for this wave, you can get the water depth and water depth here in this case appears to be 7.63 meters. Now, that you know the depth and it is clearly said in the problem that the depth of observation is same. Now, use this depth and L minor is already given to you as 20 meters substitute there and use this equation to get the T of the I mean the wave period of the smaller wave. Okay. I hope you are not tired shall we go ahead. So, having seen uh, some of this now we move on to dynamic pressures. I have already said why are we interested in knowing about the dynamic pressures under propagating waves. One is the example for monitoring of I mean warning of a tsunami etcetera and also the other one is for getting the obtaining the wave climate with the wave uh, uh, with the measurement of pressures you can get the wave climate from the pressures. So, the problem says if a pressure sensing instrument is set up at 5 meters below the still water line in a water depth of 20 meters determine the phase distribution of the pressure head this would uh, this instrument would record and also the maximum dynamic pressures. Because when you put a pressure sensor it is going to continuously record the pressure. So, one is how does this record look like the face information. And all these things we are discussing about a regular wave only. The wave height is 3 meters and the period is 8 seconds, gamma is 10 kilo Newton per meter cube. Also determine the above that is the pressure and the distribution for a wave with a period of 4 seconds. So, we are basically having two waves of same wave height, but of two different period one is a long wave and another is a short wave. So, we have derived the pressure distribution from the basic Bernoulli equation that is linearized Bernoulli equation. So, the pressure distribution pressure head is given by like this where where your k p is where your k p is pressure response factor. So, if you are not able to understand go back to the basic lecture material. So, all where everything is described in detail. So, let me take t equal to 8 seconds. The usual procedure wavelength is calculated I am skipping that you all know 
how, how the wavelength is calculated. Now, once wavelength is calculated, I calculate the pressure response factor that is what is needed, all other things are known. So, pressure response factor is calculated as 0 0.741. what will be the pressure head the dynamic pressure head will be only this part okay i am not considering the static pressure head so when you take the dynamic pressure head alone so 3 by 2 this is 3 is the wave height and this is the pressure response factor and this is going to be your pressure head. The next question is what is the maximum dynamic pressure? So, I just simply calculate the pressure this is uh, shifted here and then uh, where is the maximum dynamic pressure going to occur? This formula was derived for a sinusoidal wave. So, at sign 90 the pressure is going to be maximum and that is what we get here and this is something like so much the 11,000 Newtons per meter square which is approximately 1.11 meters of water column. So, this is the dynamic pressure head, this is the maximum dynamic pressure and what is the total pressure head? Total pressure, total pressure is I just take this gamma into out and this into gamma will be the total pressure which is given here. But of course, this you, you note that here there is one sin theta, so the pressure will be varying as per your sin theta. If you want the variation, the phase variation of the pressure, you use this phase variation. So, the phase variation of the dynamic pressure will be the same as that of u or your eta. So, now you go in repeat the same calculations for T equal to 4 that is you are considering a smaller wave. And now you, you see that the maximum pre dynamic pressure is 4265. So, compared to what we got here for a, a 8 second wave, you see that this is much less. So, what does this indicate? The pressures exerted by long waves are higher than the pressures exerted by smaller waves. Okay. So, that is what is uh, now demonstrated. Next we go on to again one more problem with the pressure uh, measurement. A subsurface pressure type recorder is installed in a water depth of 4 meters at a point where water depth is 12 meters. So, here z equal to minus 4 meters and the water depth d equal to 12 meters. The average maximum pressure and the period registered is by the recorder is 3 bar and 9 second. What is this average maximum pressure? Average maximum pressure indicates when you are measuring, we are considering a, a dynamic pressure which is a sinusoidal going to be is sinusoidal, but uh, this crust there may be small difference, uh, sometimes uh, the difference can be slightly large also. So, we take the average of that and that is what it indicates. So, the average dynamic pressure that is 
measured is here. So, you can try to get the solution as given here k is calculated then k p pressure response factor is calculated you know the value of the pressure. Now the idea is to find out at the point at which you have measured what is the point over the wave cycle it corresponds to. Since I have used a maximum average maximum pressure it can be slightly different. So, this will be when a trough is there that is from this picture we get the value of eta as minus 1.19 meters. Okay. So, now we move on to the next problem a maximum pressure of 1 bar is measured by a surface subsurface pressure recorder that is located 0.6 meters above the seabed in a water depth of 10 meters. So, the average wave frequency is given as 0 0.08 cycles per second and gamma you know. So, now here since it is a the maximum pressure that has been recorded. So, you can directly get your wave height also. So, how do we get this? So, P max is given here and Z can be calculated. So, your T can be calculated as 12.5 meters. So, 12.5 seconds from which you can calculate your wave length. The K P also can be calculated. Now, you substitute this in eta. Eta is now the maximum pressure it can record that is when the crest. So, that is why I have put h by 2 here in the original formula of p by gamma into that equation which we have seen earlier. So, you can get you will get wave height is equal to so much. So, when the wave height is of this order you will get an average pressure as measured or indicated in the problem is that clear. So, now having seen a few problems on pressure we will now move on to a problem that relates to mass transport velocity. Herein we will also first initially understand the variation of mass transport velocity as a function of different parameters and finally, we will also try to relate how it is related with the horizontal particle velocity what is the kind of magnitude or what is the kind of difference we have between these two parameters that is the idea of this problem. So, we are considering a water depth of 12 meters wave period is 10 seconds wave height is 1 meter. The first subdivision is calculate the mass transport velocity that is given as u bar of z for z equal to 0 to minus d. So, what we are trying to do is how the mass transport velocity is varying along the depth and the variation of the mass transport velocity with z by d that is nothing but the variation along the water depth. The second subdivision is we are interested to find out the variation of the mass transport velocity as a function of wave steepness. As we have already seen in the formula that if the wave steepness h by l increases it increases and I also indicated that the practical example another practical example is that during a storm and that is a time when you have a lot of debris from the ocean getting washed away towards the shore and that is the time when your wave steepness is expected to be more. So, the formula also clearly reflects this. So, we will just check how uh, it varies and finally, for uh, a given water depth of 12 meters and wave height of 2 meters, we will vary the wave period from 5 to 15 seconds and then try to find out the variation of the mass transport velocity 
as a, a function of d by l and this exercise we will try to do it only at the still water line because at each elevation it is you can easily get that is not a problem, but we will just look as uh, how it varies only at the still water line you understood now. So, first so now finally, finally we will also try to vary uh, uh, draw the uh, variation of u max. So, this is the formula for mass transport velocity the top one which is going to be a function of wave steepness h l square and then this is the celerity and all other parameters are already known to you. Then this is the orbital velocity and this is we are considering only the maximum orbital velocity. So, that phase variation etcetera will not come into picture. Now, you see that we have used the above formula to calculate the variation of the variation of u bar as a function of z by d. So, this is your still water line and this is the this is the seabed and the variation is like this. In fact, if you look at this in elevation this is the this is the wave direction this is what we have tried to show here. So, the so you see that it is of course, a hyperbolic variation and this gives a the kind of variation you can anticipate with respect to the mass transport velocity. Now, using the same thing we have just varied the wave height just to find out how all these variations can look like. So, you see that there is a steep increase in the mass transport velocity with the increase in wave steepness. And a small increase in wave steepness is quite good enough to result in a substantial increase in the variation of the mass transport velocity. This has been done only at the still water line that is z equal to 0 just to demonstrate how it varies with respect to the h by l. Then uh, the relative water depth how does it vary with respect to relative water depth. This table gives you the variation of the relative water depth as you can see here. So, as d by l increases this is the variation of the mass transport velocity and this is the variation of the orbital velocity that is maximum horizontal water particle velocity. And these two are evaluated at the still water line, okay, because these values will vary along the at different elevations, and this is the ratio. So, the ratio keeps on increasing as your d by l decreases. Is that clear? So, this is the variation of uh, the mass transport velocity for different values of d by l. So, you see that it increases. Now, this is the variation of your mass transport velocity and your horizontal water particle velocity given here and this is the u max orbital horizontal orbital velocity at the still water of course and both are at the still water and this is the mass transport velocity. So, the ratio is plotted here and you see that there is a steep decrease in the ratio and as the d by l increases it reduces. Okay. So, we have started the wave basics of wave mechanics from what is meant by a wave height, what is meant by a wave period, then wave length and then uh, when a wave moves what are, what are the uh, happenings that is uh, the distribution of uh, uh, particle velocities how these particles are moving uh, in elliptical or circular orbit depending on the wave conditions how the waves are classified according to apparent shape 
water depth, then type of as per the origin, etc. And then we went on to understand about the pressures, dynamic pressures, static pressures, etc. Now how the pressures vary under a crest, under a trough, and then how all these variables are useful and why they are needed for. Uh, I mean, uh, for uh, for the sake of uh, design of maritime structures, etc. So, and then finally, we have also looked at the mass transport velocity, another physical uh, important uh, parameter, which is uh, uh, related to uh, the, I mean coastal or ocean engineering practice. Okay, I think uh, with this, we have uh, completed the basic wave mechanics, and then we'll look into the other chapters later. Okay.